Good evening, boys and girls, and good evening, families in Region 14. This is Dr. O with my two very tired helpers, and I'm going to read a story from Hans Christian Andersen called The Brave Tin Soldier. My great-grandmother, back about 40 years ago, read me this story on a very cold night when I was very sick. I had a flu. But somehow, just my great-grandmother being there and hearing both my grandmother's soothing voice and hearing my dog at the bed and hearing, even though it was pouring rain outside, I never forgot the story of the Tin Soldier. I hope you enjoy it. The Brave Tin Soldier There were once 25 tin, tiny tin soldiers. They wore splendid red and blue uniforms and looked exactly alike, except, except that one had a drum, two had flags, and one soldier only had one leg because the man who made them had run out of tin. The one-legged soldier stood nice and straight enough, just like the others. Tin soldiers! cried the boy who opened their box. He was so excited. This was a present. He arranged all the tin soldiers on the table beside a beautiful paper castle. You could see through the castle's windows to the rooms inside. The castle had a pond made from a mirror. Even more beautiful than the castle was a graceful paper doll dancer. She wore a clear muslin skirt and a blue ribbon. Her arms reached forward, balancing one leg that had stretched out straight behind her, a little hidden from view. When the one-legged tin soldier saw the dancer, he thought she was so beautiful, and she only had one leg. I'd like to meet her, that dancer who balances so well on one leg, he thought. But she lives in a castle, whereas my house is only a box. Nevertheless, he hid where he could to see her, wondering whether perhaps if he wasn't put away with the others, he might get a chance to just say hello to her. She was so beautiful. At night, when the little boy slept, the toys played and fought together. The Nutcrackers had a loud game of leapfrog walking the canary, who chirped and sang. The tin soldiers rattled the lid off the box, but couldn't open it. Only the hiding tin soldier and the dancer remained still, each standing firmly balanced on one leg. As the clock struck midnight, the box that hid the tin soldiers sprang open and a wicked goblin bounced out. Tin soldier, it said with an evil grin, do not wish for what does not belong to you. But the tin soldier didn't make his, take his eyes off the dancer. Wait until tomorrow then, cackled the goblin. The next morning, the boy was playing with the tin soldiers and put him by the open window. A sudden gust of wind, perhaps it was really the goblin, blew him down onto the street, right through the window, onto the street. Head over heels, he tumbled, landing upside down, with his helmet stuck in a crack and his one leg up in the air. The boy ran down and hunted, but he couldn't see him. And the soldier was too proud to shout out, here I am. It began to rain and the drops fell faster and faster. Two passing lads spotted the tin soldier and said, look, look, a soldier. He needed a boat. They made him 
a boat out of his newspaper and sailed off down the gutter. The boys thought that was terrific. The rain had been very heavy and the flowing water in the gutter rocked the paper boat, but the tin soldier stood firm. The gutter flowed into a drain. Where am I going? thought the tin soldier. A water rat appeared. Show me your passport. Show it to me, the rat demanded. The soldier continued past, silent and still. Stop him, shouted the rat to a bit of wood in the stream. But the boat rushed on. The soldier heard a terrible roaring sound. Up ahead, the drain was pouring into a river. The paper boat whirled around the waterfall, spinning and spinning and filling and filled up to the very top. The water came rushing in and then the boat fell to pieces. The tin soldier stood bravely as the water rose and then he sank, thinking of the beautiful dancer he left behind on the toy table. Snap! He was swallowed by a huge fish and it was dark and narrow in the fish's belly. After a while, the fish stopped moving. Then a flash of light. It was daylight again. The tin soldier was, the tin soldier was confused. A voice cried out, I don't believe it. It's the missing tin soldier. The fish had been caught, bought, and then cut open in the kitchen table. In the very same house the soldier had come from. The cook took the much-traveled soldier to the boy who happily placed it back on the toy table. The soldier was so moved to see the dancer still balancing there silently. He nearly wept. Then it must have been the goblin's work. The boy, who was usually kind, picked up the tin soldier and threw him into the fire. The heat was terrible, through, though whether it was the flames or his love for the dancer, the soldier couldn't tell. He looked at the dancer and she looked it back at him. He felt himself melting but stood tall and steady. Suddenly, the door opened and the dra draft blew the paper doll dancer up into the air. She fluttered right into the flames by the soldier's side. The next morning, when the maid was cleaning out the fire, she found only a lump of tin in the shape of a heart. And that's the story of the brave tin soldier.